What's up, Saiyans? So, today is a little bit of a later workout. I already ate. Typically, what I'll, when I work out, it's first thing in the morning. As soon, not really as soon as I wake up, but before I eat and stuff. And yeah, I pretty much just wake up, do my red light, play with the kame, and get ready to work out. But yeah, today's a little bit later, so it's all good. But yeah, thanks for the comments on the last video. Someone also commented um, about um, going to Japan for the first time and wanting to go to Europe. So that's my question today is, one is where, what's, where's the fa your favorite place that you've been to? And secondly, I don't know why Alex is talking to me, but secondly, where's some place that you want to go? So your favorite place you've been to and some place that you want to go. So for me personally, favorite place I've been to, you guys probably can guess Japan. Uh, for those of you guys who haven't been to Japan, it's just different. It's different. Like, I think the biggest thing I like about Japan is it's really easy. It's easy to get around. Um, it's really safe. Um, having a kame and just bringing like a baby to someplace like um, Sandra and I were talking about going back to Bali and stuff and probably wouldn't bring like a kame um, or her new brother when he's born this year um, in the next few months to someplace like Bali just because it's a really third world um, the roads aren't really safe <laughs> like traveling and transporting to places is just not safe and yeah, but um, Japan, you just feel really safe all the time. Like Sandra forgot her wallet in one of the stores, came back while it was still there, you know? And you see countless um, videos on TikTok where people forget their bags and wallets on the train and nobody touches it, you know? Do that in New York, it's probably gone, <laughs> gone in the next stop, right? So yeah, and secondly is the service. Like service is second to none in Japan. Like you don't tip nobody, they don't accept tips or gratuity anywhere, but they'll give you like the best five-star service ever, you know? And that's just because it's the culture there. The culture is just so different. Like they take pride in everything they do. You know, if you work at the grocery store, they take pride in bagging your groceries, ringing you up. Um, if you're like a shoe cleaner, they take pride in cleaning your shoes. If you're a janitor, you know, they take pride in everything they do. And it's just, it's just very interesting. And obviously the biggest thing, or one of the biggest reasons we go is the food. Like if the food wasn't that good, then we probably honestly wouldn't go. But like fresh fish, not even the, not even fresh fish, like some of the best fish in the world, you know, if not the best fish in the world, you know, for those of you guys who say like, I don't like sushi, whatever, but haven't been to Japan, you haven't tried sushi yet. You know, don't <clears throat> write off sushi or raw fish until you actually, until you tried it in Japan. Like even this past trip to Sapporo, ate some of the best crab I've ever ate in my life, ate some of the best, um, oh, hamachi, thank you babe, um, hamachi. Yeah, for those of you guys who don't like real fishy fish, get hamachi, it's real clean. Like for me, like I love like the otoro and um, the real fatty tuna and stuff, but I can't eat a lot of it just because it's like very just it's just very strong and fatty, you know. So I'll eat like a piece or two and then I'm good. But hamachi, I can eat like tons of it just because it's so clean, so melt in your mouth. And yeah, we had the best hamachi um, I've ever had in my life in Sapporo. And yeah, there's just so much to do there. Um, this next trip we're going to go, it's going to be nice and cold. So it's going to be a lot different than it is Hawaii. Um, because I live in Hawaii, um, wanna, because we live in Hawaii, we don't really want to go to some place that has beaches and tropical weather. A lot of people, when they think of traveling, they think of like beaches and tropical weather and all that stuff. But for us, we just kind of want something different, you know? Just because if we want to go to the beach, we'll just go. We'll drive like 15, 20 minutes down the road, you know? But yeah let me know 
Let me know also if any of you guys have been to Hawaii yet as well. Because, yeah, Hawaii has always been home. Even when I lived in New York, the plan was to always come back home to Hawaii, start a family in Hawaii. You know, it definitely wasn't in New York. Nothing wrong with New York. New York's just hard, you know. I've seen and I've helped so many parents coming down the stairwell to going to train stations, you know. Like moms, at, like moms in New York, if they're by themselves and they're trying to catch a train and they have a stroller with like a, you know, a young baby, they just wait in the front for someone to just help them carry it down the stairs. Like it's sad, you know, and I've helped tons of moms do that and they just wait. And if people just walk past, because, you know, New York is get in, get out, get on with your life, then they just wait around for some nice person to help them. And it sucks, you know, but that's just how it is, because no one has cars. It's very expensive to own a car in New York and all that stuff. But, yeah, Hawaii is a very awesome place. I would highly recommend any of you guys to come visit. Um, yeah, if you guys have the chance to. But I'm all warmed up. Let's get this workout really excited because the last time I hit this workout was just the acclimation workout. So today we're gonna see how heavy we can go, how strong we are. Oh, All right. No. <clears throat> oh, no. Oh, no. First exercise we're doing unilateral pull-ups. Oh, these actually feel really damn good. I've never programmed these. So I'm real curious how heavy we can go. Uh, but yeah, we're just gonna start with 20. Rep it out. Think. <clears throat> Anywhere in the eight to 10, perfectly fine. Let's use a little bit more liquid chalk. Okay, go. It's not happening. Uh, nine reps. Not ten, but uh, definitely think get to at least 30, 40 pounds. <clears throat> okay, so next exercise we got is paused <clears throat> neutral grip bench. So I'm doing it on an incline. I've decided after the last meso that flat just isn't for me, as I talked about last time. So all my pressure is gonna be incline from now on. It will mess up <clears throat> some of the balance in some of the workouts. However, it's totally fine. Like, like I said, these workouts aren't made specifically for me, but for everyone to make gains. So. That's why you can just adjust as needed, but yeah, pause it. <laughs> Neutral grip, dumbbell pressing, another exercise I've never really experienced with before. Like I've done neutral grip bench a lot or a bunch of times before, but I've never run like a full training cycle with them, especially pause. Pause benching <clears throat> will humble you real fast. So <clears throat> we're just gonna do 70s, see what I can get with them. Ugh and go from there. <clears throat> yeah, also just kind of rushing the rest of this workout just because I'm running short on time. Um, parents came over to see Akami. They haven't seen her in a while. So that was nice that they got to see her. And yeah, I just took like a 15, 20 minute break. So let's just get after this. 
Yeah, and I kicked it up. Weird. That burnt, burned. <laughs> oh. Yeah, definitely feel like I can go heavier as I kind of acclimate a little bit more to this movement. Oh. But that felt really good. Also, a neutral grip isn't like a position that I'm used to benching in. So it feels nice to kind of work in that in that angle and just strengthen that so let's keep going okay next exercise we got is inclined dumbbell curls <clears throat> this is not a new exercise but honestly one of my favorite curl variations So we got 35s on, honestly, anywhere in the range of eight to 10. I'm gonna do them bilaterally. And as soon as I start fatiguing, then I'll switch to unilateral, keep the form tight and keep tempo. And let's get them 18s. Honestly, better than expected. Well, obviously, if I said the goal is eight to 10, and I got 11, but, oh, I feel good. I think we can go up to the 40s next time. And then, now we're really talking. Also, I felt like my tempo was pretty good. I gotta rewatch the clips, but I felt like I had a nice control on the negatives too. So, huh. take that. Okay, now we have two more exercises and we are done with this workout. Okay, so here we got Kelso Shrugs. So, pretty new movement that we just added to this mezzo. However, as far as shrugs go, I think this is my favorite way to do the shrugs. What's funny is also like, it's crazy how 
a lot of the old school techniques right now are kind of coming around full circle. Like history repeats itself. <clears throat> and that's really how I feel like it is with training. Because if you remember, at least when I started training, it was all about <clears throat> going hard to failure. If you're not hitting failure, you're not trying. If you're not, if you have another rep, then you're not doing it right. And everyone just trained to failure all the damn time. And then it went more towards volume where it was always, it was always like total tonnage. How much, like if you bench like 10 pounds, 10 times, that's a hundred pounds of total tons you're putting on your body and just increasing that over the course of the mezzo, right? And then now it's back to more like high intensity, going train the failure, not leaving any reps in the tank. However, it's kind of like, like a mix of both where you're also gauging your volume. So because you're training a failure, your volume can be a lot lower and you're trying to get, build those stimulating reps. So I totally got sidetracked and forgot where I was going with that. But, oh yeah, how history repeats itself. Back to my old trainer when I was 16 years old. That's another technique he would show me. Um, and that was, so not only did he teach me the guillotine press, he showed me, stand, like, even the way I do my um, rear delt flies, my chest support rear delt flies, he taught me how to stand and lean against it to create that better angle to engage your rear delts. He showed me that. <clears throat> also, he taught me how to shrug where you lean slightly forward and shrug back. So he was doing Kelso shrugs before everyone else was doing Kelso shrugs, and he probably learned that from another old school bodybuilder as well. So it's just funny how a lot of these things come back, you know? And I remember when I first got into like the YouTube thing or first got into social media, everyone was saying, oh yeah, don't shrug where you roll your shoulders and stuff. And yes, I still believe that. It was always shrug, you know, straight up and down if you are going to shrug. But even, uh, but yeah, he was the one that used to teach that. Akame's getting a little mad because Sandra just left. But Akame can watch me Kelso shrug. Okay, Akame, this is how you Kelso shrug. So yeah, pretty much... Go forward, get that stretch in your traps. I do want to experiment doing it on a smith instead. I think a smith, if you have access to a smith, would be perfect for this exercise. <clears throat> but these cables feel pretty damn good as well. So get that nice stretch. Also traps and one of those small muscles that fatigue really fast. I think I did a little overdid the warming up a little bit, but whatever. Eight reps, it's all good. Uh, I notice every time I do this exercise, it's feeling better and better though. So that's the main thing. All right, last exercise: single arm tricep push downs. Now, these are like a simple staple exercise. Like, I could probably add these in every single mezzo. It's, no, no. Honestly, probably like one of the best, like if you had to pick one tricep exercise to isolate the triceps, um, it would probably be this. Yeah, um, I'm using also the ankle cuff with this just because it feels better. So with the ankle cuff, I'm not putting my hand flat and just pushing straight down. I'm actually putting it at like a slight like 45 degree angle. So I'm kind of pushing down at a 45 degree angle. I notice that's like where I feel it the most in all three heads of my triceps. So not straight down with a flat palm, but slightly turned and just kind of like, like that. So... Yeah, not that heavy. Got like 40 pounds on this. I'm just gonna rep it out or try to. 40 pounds. Actually, yeah, 
another exercise I haven't really trained a lot of, but this is a staple that I think I'm gonna keep. Yeah, especially if we need like a unilateral exercise. In all my workouts, I try to include at least one unilateral exercise um, just for balance, but yeah, let's just go. That's gonna be fun to match. Ooh. So I gotta double check that clip, honestly. I remembered in my right arm, <clears throat> I kind of lost count a, a little like midway through, but I think that was 13, so hopefully I matched it. But anyways, yeah, any unilateral exercise, always start with your weaker arm. Reason being is, you know, you're gonna be strongest with your first arm, so you wanna give it to your weaker arm. Um, your stronger arm's gonna match regardless. For this, for all unilateral exercises, if you guys have to take a break in between, like one to two minute break in between, that's totally fine. I'll take a break on things like Bulgarian split squats, things where it's exhausting and it kind of, you have to catch your breath in between, you know? But things like tricep extensions, that kind of thing, like it's not going to affect, unless your cardio is really bad, it shouldn't affect your cardio to the point where you're like out of breath, so out of breath after the first set that you can't do the other arm. So like things like that, a little bit more isolated. I wouldn't really worry about it. I know like the big thing on social media right now is rest times and rest periods. And bottom line is rest as long as you need to until you can, until for you to be pushed the most amount of weight as possible, if that makes sense. So there's no law on two short rest times or two long rest times. As long as you're not getting cold, you're not risking injury, and you can still maximally push as much weight as you can, then it's all good. Like I've taken, excuse me, I've taken like 10 minute breaks, you know, on really heavy days when I'm not feeling it, just so I can complete the next set. So just at the end of the day, just do what you gotta do. Or on days when you're in a rush. I've rested like one minute in between, two minutes in between exercises, and I wasn't able to, you know, maximally push as much as possible. But then it's all good, right? So uh, that's the end of the workout. Oh, also, shout out to this company, RHB Hawaii. This is Sandra's sister-in-law's good friend's company. Um, they're a local company in Hawaii. So <clears throat> for any of you who might want like a Hawaii towel. They have like sick designs. Their towels are actually really high quality as well. To be honest, I like their kitchen towels a lot. Like their gym towels are good. I don't honestly don't sweat a lot when I work out, especially during the winter. Summer, that'll be a different story. <laughs> but um, yeah, their kitchen towels, their beach towels, ponchos, 
that kind of thing. They have all really high quality towels. You know anyone that likes Hawaii, you have a friend that loves Hawaii, um, it could be a good gift if they want, you know, you want to get them something local, that kind of thing. But yeah, really high quality, really good people. And yeah, they just sent us a bunch of their stuff. So, and to be honest, I was using, we we're using Sandra's beach towel, like ever since I met her, which was a towel by them, I didn't even know. And that's one of our favorite beach towels that we use. And it's still good to this day. It's like four years later. Um, so yeah, really like that. Answer the question that I asked in the beginning of the video. Let me know. Favorite place, place you want, a favorite place that you've been to, favorite place that you want to visit. Come visit Hawaii for those of you guys who haven't. <clears throat> Winter time can be a little bit rainy, but at least it's not as hot as hot and humid and probably not as busy as summertime and stuff. Maybe it is. I don't really know. But anyways, I'm going to end the video here. It's getting late. Got a lot of work to do. And I'm also starting to work on the next mezzo. So hope you guys are excited for that. And yeah, really liking this mezzo as well. But we're in this video here. See you guys in the next one. Don't be a Yamcha. Stay consistent. Kill your workouts and ascend.